Hello everybody, welcome back to Jimmy's Coins. In this episode, I'm not going to be going through any pennies at all, actually. I have news. You see, over the last 70 episodes, I've kept a tally of exactly how many boxes I've gone through, how many wheats we found, how many foreign coins, Indian head pennies, proofs, dimes, and anything else. And I kept it all in these sticky notes, and recently I've just added it all up. Recently in our last episode, which was episode number 70, we surpassed a total of 500,000 pennies searched through. We actually hit 505,000. So in this video, we're going to be going over my top favorite finds I found in the entire series. We're going to be taking a look at the books and seeing what we put in there, how many we filled up. And I have some statistics on coin roll hunting that I have to show you guys um, after adding up all of our coins that we found. What's funny is when I was watching my older videos to get some clips of my favorite finds, I just realized how bad my editing and audio skills used to be. I mean, there was literally clips that I just filmed it sideways and I never thought to fix it or the audio was just horrible, but I did my best to repair the audio for you guys, so enjoy. All right, we're, I don't even know how many rolls it's been, but we just found something incredible, guys. This is only my second time ever finding one of these. And if you look right here, if you know what that is, that is the penny that came before the weed penny. Let me show you. Here's the back of a weed penny. It's kind of a bad example, but this is actually an Indian head penny. And they are from, I think, 1856 to 1909. And... They're super rare and hard to find in circulation. So let's see what the year is. 1903. Wow. Guys, look, it's super worn. It's amazing finding these. All right, we just had an absolutely amazing find. Right here, I'm only on roll number one. We got an addition. It's in horrible shape. But since I got these boxes from somewhere, that must not take out the steel scent. So we got a steel scent, 1943 Philadelphia. This is the first steel scent I found in like 188 boxes. I think that's how many boxes we've been through in this series. It finally happened. It's in really rough shape, but it's going to be an addition into the Penny album. Now, for number five, it's actually still kind of a mystery what this one is, but I found it pretty recently, about six episodes ago, I think. Um, but it's a 1990, as you can see here, and it's obviously not the same color as a regular penny. So I think, I, at first, I thought it was um, the missing the copper coating, but now I have no clue because I took it into a coin shop and they said they put it in like one of those things that you could tell the metal content. They said it was like 50% um, copper, 45% zinc, and 5% nickel, which makes no sense at all. So I really just have to get this one graded. I need to get like an account or something with PCGS. But here's um, the clip of me finding it. Okay, so we have just seven rolls left, and this is a really weird find, and I don't know what it is completely. So as you can see, we have a 1990 right here. And it looks like it's made of steel or zinc. It's not magnetic. Um, it's in really good condition. And I think I might have an idea of what it is. I don't know. As you can see, it's obviously like a silver color. The rim is all the same as well. I don't know if it was dipped in something, but I had an idea of what it was. I thought it might be um, a zinc penny that is missing the copper coating layer. If it is though, that would be extremely rare. And I, I looked at a video, one graded at MS65 sold for over a thousand. So that would be really great if that was that, but I don't know, if, if anybody knows, please let me know in the comments if you think this is um, any sort of error or if it's just dipped in like aluminum or zinc. But yeah, it's not magnetic and so pretty cool. Never found something like this before, in this good of shape at least, so we'll put it to the side. It could be very valuable, I don't know. So for number four, it's actually a coin that we have in our album here, this 1937. I wasn't too excited about it when I first found it, 
But now that I think about it, it is the oldest coin that I have with luster on it, which is just really cool. It's almost 100 years old, and it still has some luster on it. So here's the clip of me finding it. Roll 46, and we actually just got a really good find. Um, this 1937 right here has a lot of luster on it, and I've never really found one from the 30s with this much luster, so that's pretty cool. It's definitely going to be a replacement in the album. Alright, I'm very excited right now because I just found a first for me, uh, mainly because I haven't even looked for them before. Um, but we're on roll. We have five rolls left. I am excited because what I have under the microscope here, we have a double die. And I've actually never found a double die um, because I just recently learned about a lot of the errors that you're supposed to look for. I wrote them down in this postcard. Like, um, Obviously, I know the 69S. Uh, we have all these right here I've been looking for. This one is a 95. Um, as you can see right here. It's 1995. It's not in the best shape, so it's probably not going to be worth too much. But it is my first DDO. You can see all those letters are very clearly doubled. Uh, especially God. We is um, a little bit. Trust isn't that much. And then, and let's see. And these a little bit, but mostly Liberty, especially the B. The B and the E and the R, actually just all the letters are very clearly doubled um, upwards. So that's a really cool find. It says in this book here that um, an MS-65, it's worth $50. This one's nowhere near MS-65 um, because it's just in bad shape. But we will take that. I'm going to keep looking for more DDOs and stuff. It's the very next roll, and I'm quite excited because I just know we have to have an old one right here. I mean, look how worn that is. That has to be teens or 20s or something. I guess let's flip it around and see what it is. Hopefully, it's what we need. Oh. Oh, my gosh. No way. We... <laughs> Guys, I do not know if you saw that. That is not teens. That is not 20s. That is a 1909. Is there a VDB? I'd, I'll have to look at it under the scope. It's too worn. Oh my gosh, we just got a 1909. I need to, hold on a sec. Let me look up the mintage and stuff. Okay, so I don't think there's a VDB and there's definitely not a mint mark, but that's still not even that high minted um, at only 72 million. A uh, first year wheat penny, this base, they also made uh, Indian head pennies this year. Um, as you can see, there's like four different varieties, so it will be going right there at the end of the video, of course. All right, guys, I'm so excited right now. We have not been getting like anything in this box. We have three wheat pennies. We're in, like almost halfway through the box. And look at that right there. That is a thumbnail. Hold on, let me go take a picture. All right, I got my picture. My each in the thumbnail. But that is an Indian head penny. First of all, I've not even seen the year yet. Let's see if it's 1800s. It's 1800s. Oh my God. That's my first ever... 1800s find oh my god let's go that's my first ever 1800s find let's see what decade 98 guys look at that in 1898 indian head i've only ever found these in the 1900s that is awesome 1898 there's the back it's in amazing condition I've never, I've always wanted to find one from the 1800s. And look at this. We got one from the 1800s. That is insane. We definitely need that for the book. Holy crap, guys. Look at this. And, and it was like right next to a bunch of brand new pennies. We're next to a 2017. That is absolutely wild. Guys, we literally have two rolls left in this box. We already have an Indian head penny. 
and I don't even know what to say because there's another one right there. Oh my gosh. And first of all, we have a Canadian up here. A 77. This is insane. This is literally such a good box for Indian head pennies. <laughs> let's just see what the year is. Actually, let's see. Another 1898. Wow. Two 1898s. That is crazy. This one is in much worse shape, but I was not expecting that. We got two 1800s Indian head pennies in the same box. This one is very corroded, but that is wild. Guys, look at this. In one box, that isn't 1898 next to another in H9. This one's in very good shape, and this one is not, but that is wild. We just found another Indian head scent right there. Well, I don't know what happened because we've been getting no fines. Um, we just have those three wheat pennies and that one Canadian still, but suddenly I see a really worn wheat penny, a nice 72 right there, Canadian, and another worn wheat penny back here. This one, I don't know what's going on with it, but let's see, 1945, I think it's just a worn down 45, and then this 78 right here. And then this one, obviously, it just looks really old. So let's see what it is. Oh, it's a teens, it's a 13 Denver. Oh my God. I believe that is a 13 Denver, guys. It's definitely a teens mid mark with a Denver. That is, I was not expecting that at all. Oh, wait, hold on. All right, well, it's gonna be even harder to see on camera, but I really can't tell. I think it's either a 13 or a 12 Denver. I don't think it's an 18. 18 would be a lot more common. Uh, but that right side is just really worn. I don't know why the, the last number has to be so worn, but that is a great find, whatever it is, because it's something that we need. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed my favorite finds there from our Penny series so far. But I do have some more things I want to show you before we get into the albums. Just a couple things that I pulled aside in flips. Um, like here we have three off-centered coins. All pretty modern. That one's probably the heaviest off-centered. And then over here we have several, like, very nice uncirculated wheat scents. This one is for 46, and this one is just super nicely toned. These are all from the 50s. And then we have all four proofs we've ever found. So I just want to show those real quick. But now let's take a look at the first album. Let's look at the Indian head scents first to see how we did on those. Okay, here's our Indian head scent book from 1857 all the way to 1909. Of course, never found any flying eagles, although I would really like to find one of those one day. In fact, we didn't find anything older than 1898. You guys already saw the video of me finding that. Pretty exciting. Some other YouTubers I watch have definitely found older stuff, but I'm happy with what I have for the Indians. They're very hard to find in circulation. We found seven total, um, so we did have some duplicates. And we found two 1903s and two 19 or 1898s, but uh, we also have a 1900, which was I think cleaned, and then 1902, 03, and 05. So we found 5 out of 58 of the coins in this book. Let's go look at the next book. Alright everybody, here is our 1909 to 1940 album right here. I counted it up and we found 45 of the 89 slots filled in this one just from coin roll hunting. I'm very happy with this. Um, so we're, there's our, There are quite a few easier dates that we could definitely get, such as the 1923, 74 million minted. And obviously there's a lot that we found under that, such as the 25 Denver right there, um, as well as the 1913. That one is pretty common as well, which we don't have. Um, we have 13 Denver right next to it. A lot more rare coin. 13 is definitely a possible date to get. Um, for the teens, I don't know if there's any much more common ones other than the 17S and 18 Denver. For the 20s, unless we find a key date, uh, I guess there are those two out there. Those are teens, the 18S and 19D. For the 20s, 
They're pretty low mintage to be honest. Maybe the 26 Denver, 25S, 27D, 28D. Those are kind of more common dates. Um, for the 30s, really, these are all low mintage ones we're missing other than 37S there. And of course, during the Great Depression, a lot of these were super rare. As you can see, this one got down in the thousands, the 31S there. The 30D is definitely possible. I've seen other YouTubers find that one before. Uh, some of the lower mintage years we have in this one are, of course, 36S. The uh, 13D over here is our lowest. We got the 1915, we got the 25 Denver, and I'm sure there's more that I'm missing, but let's go have a look at the next album, and hopefully we can find more additions for this one in the future. And here's our next album from 1941 to 1974. As you can see, this one is much more filled up. These ones are a lot easier to find from the 1940s. You, typically, wheat pennies before 1940 are a lot more rare to find than after 1940. Um, and of course, we have memorial scents, which are all pretty much red, because um, I only really put the red ones in here. Memorial scents are a lot more common than wheat pennies. But we'll look at the wheat pennies to start. Um, as you can see, a lot of ours are red. Right there, that's where the memorials start. Wheat pennies are before that. So our later wheat scents in the 50s are typically mostly red, missing that 1957, and of course 55S. 55S is actually a pretty recent addition, um, but really, the only things we're missing, you guys know if you've been watching my channel, we struggle to get steel scents, but um, we did find one recently, and that's our only steel scent we've ever found. That's why it was one of my favorite finds if you watched that earlier in the video. So we are also struggling to find the 42S somehow, even though it's pretty high mintage. But I'm hopeful that we'll get that in the future sometime. And yeah, gonna have to go through some more custom wrapped rolls to find the steel sense probably. But here's how our album's going. Pretty much all the way full. And um, let's go have a look at the next one, which is completely full. All right, here's the next album. This one goes from 1975 all the way to 2013. We don't really collect anything after 2013. And for the most part, actually completely, every penny in this one is completely red. There aren't any brown scents. There are a couple like modern ones that I need to upgrade, but I just haven't been worrying about them too much. I'm not really on the lookout for a 2012 Denver or 2011 Denver, but I will get around to it. Those ones are pretty common to find. But yeah, these uh, newer ones here are Zincs. We have all the 1982 small dates, coppers, all that stuff, so... Album's looking pretty good. Don't really pay much attention to this one. Mostly just looking for that old stuff, but here's how it is going. Alright, and here's our Canadian albums. I've only started filling these up since episode 38, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so let's have a look at this first one here and see how we're doing. Alright, and here is how we're doing on the Canadian sense here. Found 61 out of the 100 finds for this album and the other album over there. So we're doing pretty good for Cornwall Hunting American Pennies. Um, on finding Canadian scents. Our oldest find is a 1942, and we have everything after 1955 besides the 85.5 right here. Mostly these are all red scents, and doing pretty good. What's funny is when I was looking for my best finds, I actually noticed that we did find a 1953 before I started the Canadian albums, so I'm not gonna count it. And I do have something to show you guys. I did actually find a King George V coin roll hunting Canadian pennies. I've never shown it on my channel before, but we found a 1934 Canadian King George V. My only one ever. Really cool find. Fortunately, I can't count it because we found it before the penny series. But that would be right there at 7 million minted, my lowest minted coin ever found. So that's pretty cool. Those ones are very rare. But uh, yeah, hopefully we can get some more additions for this one in the future. Here's how we're doing in the newer Canadian albums. This one only goes from 1989 to 2012, and these newer ones up here are pretty hard to find because the Canadian coins just simply haven't had enough time to circulate into American currency, I guess. So we have all the older ones in this one, but not a lot of the newer ones. Uh, one of these is actually a pretty rare one. We don't have it, but the 2006 P is 233,000 minted. That is a very rare, that's rarer than the 1909 S VDB. Probably will never get that one, but hopefully we can keep filling this one up. All right, well, for those of you that stayed throughout my favorite finds and the albums, I do have some statistics that I want to show you because you're obviously some serious coin roll hunters. 
Let me just oh, turn on my computer real quick. I made this little Google Doc here. So we actually ended up going through 506,750 pennies from banks. We went through uh, 5,000, that is $5,067.50 in pennies. We found 2,271 wheat cents total, seven Indian heads, 1,151 foreign coins, 99 dimes, none of which were silver, although I did find a silver sixpence before I created my YouTube channel, Well Coin Ronting Pennies. We got four proofs, and then here's our statistics. Wheat cents per box is 11.2 on average per box. Indian heads is 0.035 per box, or you have a 3.5% chance of finding one. Foreign coins is 5.68 per box. Dimes is 0.49, or uh, one every two boxes on average. For proofs, you have about a 2% chance of finding a proof in a single box of pennies, which is very low. And then you guys already saw this, but I filled 217 out of the 264 penny slots from 1909 to 2013. 5 out of 58 for the Flying Eagle and Indian Head books, and 61 out of the 100 Canadian cents. Alright everybody, thank you so much for watching. That's going to do it for my first 500,000 pennies coin roll hunted through. I'll put a link to my last penny video on the screen, and I'll see you on the next 500,000.